Good morning, welcome back to the channel and um, welcome back to my videos. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers recently. Um, my subscriber count is nearly a thousand actually. Um, in fact, let me do a quick, quick check. We are at 996 subscribers. So uh, thank you for everybody who has subscribed recently. If you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, please do go hit uh, that subscribe button. Um, and hopefully I can get to a thousand pretty soon. Um, in fact, it's gonna be a couple of weeks before this video goes out, so I might even be at a thousand by the time this video goes out, we'll see. Uh, welcome to Bally Castle. Stephen is there behind the lamppost. So we are in Bally Castle this morning. I have cycled from uh, from home in Ballymena about 30 miles cycle this morning so far. That might be mistake number one of this trip. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we're in Ballycastle because we're about to get the Kintyre Express ferry from Ballycastle uh, across the, what is it, the Irish Sea? The North Atlantic? I don't know. Irish Sea is more like towards England. Yeah. I don't know. Across the water, basically, to Isla. Isla is one of the islands in the Inner Hebrides off the west coast of Scotland. So we're going to go over there, uh, do a bit of bike packing this, uh, this weekend. Now actually, Stephen and I did this uh seven years ago 2016. 2016 we headed over to isla before either of us really knew about bike packing i mean i was into <laughs> cycling at the time but before either of us were into bike packing and we took Stephen had an old vintage road bike with down tube shifters i had a carbon frame road bike with a two-man tent bungee corded to the frame it was um it was good fun we did that i actually we both thought that this was going to be our first multi-day multi-night bike packing event but actually that time we went to Isla was multi-day as well because we came back the next day and then went out to Rathlin. We didn't, we didn't but, we oh, okay, there. okay, fair enough, fair no, enough. I don't quite catch it. So the plan is that we're going to get the boat across to Isla, we're going to cycle across Isla today and get the ferry the other side of Isla across to Jura. Um, and then we've got a few camping spots that we're going to suss out and do some wild camping on Jura for one night, then back onto Isla, do some exploring on Isla and then back to Ballet Castle on Sunday. That's the plan. Um, I have stopped at Ursa Minor uh, to get myself a coffee and a pastry for second breakfast. So we're going to eat those now and then go get the ferry. Keep those brakes on. I don't want either bike to end up in the harbour. There's only about six people on this ferry last time we were here. Yeah. Remember they cancelled it on the way back? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, might well be a bit of spray today, so Aye, once we've got to Port Ellen, we'll hold your lights and that's down for you, so. Mm -hmm. Goes a bit of weight in this one, eh? Aye, hang wow. on. Just a check, everybody's going to Port Ellen today, yes. Well, Stephen and I made it in time for the boat. Um, I cycled up, Stephen drove up. Um, and we both made it in time. The, uh, the captain of the boat has just said it's going to be a bit of a choppy crossing potentially, um, but uh, hopefully not too bad because I'm kind of like not great with boats. I don't get motion sickness. I've never got seasickness, but you know the way some people are afraid of flying. Well, I'm afraid of boats, so um, <laughs> this could be interesting. Here, to inflate your life jacket, if you have a look on the right hand side, there's a little red towel hanging out. To inflate a life jacket, all you do is simply give that dog with it a sharp pull, that inflates a life jacket. The life jackets are also automatic inflation life jackets, which means if you're running with water for any reason, the life jacket will automatically inflate. So, okay, those are arm wrestling seats, and quickly make sure you get close if you're arm wrestling, because you're just there.
Welcome to Scotland. Welcome to Isla. Seven years after Stephen and I last visited, we have uh, we we are back in Isla. We always said we would do this trip again, um, and we finally we finally have. Stephen's just taking his drone off from his foot. I'm gonna I'm gonna fly my drone in a in a minute or two. I'll let Stephen fly his first, so we don't have a mid-air collision. So if you follow me on Instagram, you might have noticed over the last couple of weeks when I've been preparing for this trip, um, I have been using a slightly different bike than I used in my last video when I was testing my bike packing gear. Um, that's because the videos from Ida um, and Jura, this little series of, of bike packing videos, is very kindly being sponsored by the guys at Fussel Bikes. Fussel Bikes are a Northern Irish based bike company um, and they make some really really nice gravel bikes so um reached out to them and they have for this trip lent me a fossil causeway gr1 it's a lovely lovely gravel bike it's a good two or three kilos lighter than my other gravel bike um, and uh, yeah really really lovely bike so thank you very much to the guys at fossil for loaning me a bike for uh for three four days for this trip um, I'm going to do a separate video about the bike and my whole bike packing setup. Um, I'll do that once I get back. But yeah, for now, thank you to the guys at Fussel for lending me the bike and sponsoring these videos. Our rough plan for the next couple of days is today we're going to cycle across Isla to Port Askig, grab some lunch there, then get the ferry across to Jura. Suss out a few camping spots, camp on Jura tonight, maybe go up to Craig House to see the distillery tomorrow tomorrow afternoon and Sunday, explore Isla, and then back home on Sunday afternoon. But we, we have no we have no real specific plans or agenda or anything like that. We have a few camping spots picked out and we're just gonna play it by ear. Take it easy. I'm looking forward to taking it easy on the bike and just gently slow cruising around the island. Um, islands should be, uh, should be good fun. Uh, the weather forecast is looking pretty positive for us. It is quite warm at the minute. The forecast is to that it is to be kind of sunny spells, maybe the odd shower here and there. But I mean, you take a risk when you come to Scotland and uh, bike pack. You know that it could be horrendous, horrendous weather. But um, it looks like it's going to be okay. Not too much rain, uh, not too much wind, and not completely freezing. So we'll uh, we'll take that. But yeah, I think we're going to go start making the the trek across Isla. So I will see you at the other side of Isla at Port Askeg for the next ferry. drivers pulled in let us pass. When would that happen at home? Just wouldn't happen at home. So yeah, little narrow road with passing places and the drivers stopped probably 100 meters away when they saw us coming. Very polite. Where that goes? 
Part of me wants to explore the random gravel trails. No, I would like to go snowboarding, but not skiing. Plus it's so expensive. If I'm gonna spend money on sports, it's gonna be cycling. Um, so we're out of Port Allen a bit, and we're heading, we're actually probably about halfway, maybe a third of the way across um, the island now. And um, although I'm riding a gravel bike, we're not actually doing loads of gravel riding on this trip. It's mostly road. Uh, there's a little bit of gravel on Jura. Surface gravel. <laughs> the surface gravel. There's a little bit of gravel on Jura, a couple of miles. There's probably a bit of hike a bike on Jura. Um, but a lot of the roads we are riding are, they're like, in Ireland they'd call them boreens. They're little single track roads, sometimes, you know, grass up the middle, that, that kind of thing. Very little traffic. Um, interestingly, what traffic we have come across, I, I'm amazed. So we've been cycling along and there's been a car coming towards us. It's maybe 100 metres away and the car, 100 metres away, pulls in to let us cycle us through, which just doesn't happen at home. Listen to how quiet it is. How peaceful. Big fluent cow. It works, look, they're all, they're all looking now. The benefit of my slightly better cycling fitness over Stephen is that if one of the Highland cows decides to escape and charges, I don't have to outrun the cow or outcycle the cow, I just have to outcycle Stephen. I could just push you off the bike and then I could run. You could run? Yeah. I love how sparse and barren and remote it is up here. Like it's so quiet and peaceful, nothing and nobody around. Hearing, <clears throat> we're hearing bird calls and bird sounds that like I've never heard. Um, you can hear the wildlife, you can see the wildlife. That's just incredible. So peaceful. Like the Glens of Antrim and the Sparrows and stuff are great, but these are proper. This is proper remote.
we find some actual gravel and a beautiful loch. So this is uh, Loch Bally Grant. Um, we are in the Dunlossard estate, so that means we're only kind of three miles now from Port Askeg. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that. Port Askeg? Port Askeg? Port Askeg? Um, so three, four miles and then stop for lunch. gravelly climb with a lot of weight on the back. Good fun, just fun gravel. One handed filming is not advised. Um, just along the shores of Loch Valley Grant and Loch Allen. Uh, heading towards Port Askeg. Hopefully for a big cheeseburger. Downhill now, I promise. Tough. Oh, oh, look. Downhill. To the ferry port. We've made it up to uh, Port of Skeg, so this is the, the ferry terminal where you can get a ferry to mainland Scotland, but we are just getting the ferry just across there. That is the Isle of Jura, um, and you can't see, but in the cloud are the Paps of Jura, um, these big kind of mountains. You can actually see them from the north coast of Northern Ireland sometimes on a really clear day, but yeah, we've stopped at the Port Askeg Hotel and Bar. We're going to have kind of some lunch, um, burger and a beer, and then we get the ferry across the Jura and try and find somewhere to camp later on. We're having a big feed for lunch now because but there's nothing between here really and Craig House on Jura, which is about eight or nine miles on around the coast on Jura. Uh, that, and we didn't really have room to bring proper food with us, so I'm just gonna be eating dried um, Huel for dinner. Um, I mean, I said dried Huel, I'm going to add hot water to it so it becomes like a pasta thing but um but yeah it's just kind of dried meals for dinner so having the main main meal now and that means we didn't have to worry about packing actual food and different things for um for dinner that's not our ferry that's our ferry <laughs> Welcome to Jura. That behind me is Noy Isla, and we are on Jura. 
interesting fact about Jura. I have been doing my Wikipedia research. Apparently, Jura has a population of about 196 people and a red deer population of about 6,000, um, which is bonkers. Um, also, there's a big fell race on on Jura this weekend, which we didn't realise when we planned this trip. Um, it's a fell race over the Paps of Jura. Um, and I think uh, somebody earlier told us there's 200 or 250 people doing this race tomorrow. So that means that the population of Jura has doubled this weekend because of the people who are doing the fell race. Um, now hopefully they're camping mostly uh, in Craig House at the Jura Hotel kind of campground. Um, uh, which means we should be able to hopefully be able to find somewhere else to camp. But yeah, an island this size with 196 people, even with an extra couple of hundred, we should be able to find somewhere to camp. What a lovely piece of tarma. I know, it's so nice. This, uh, this tarmac is incredibly smooth, it's unbelievable. But I guess when there's only one road on your island, it's probably easier to upkeep and maintain it. There is literally one road on Jura, it's called the Long Road, I think. And it goes from Phelan, where we just got the ferry, up through Craig House, all the way to Ardlissa. Um, so yeah, one road for the whole island. Camping spot number one, we have one, two, three options. We've, we've three options that we know about to check out. Option number four was the Jura Hotel, but it's gonna be bunged with the fell runners. So we have three options along this stretch of road to check out. And then we're gonna hit a gravel track up towards the Paps, uh, the Paps of Jura. And um, there's potential camping spots up there as well. Um, but this is a pretty good spot. There's flat, there's some nice flat ground, there's a water source behind us. It's nice and sheltered, so it is a pretty good spot. And I, I, I'd be quite keen to camp here, assuming that nobody else has pitched here by the time we get back. But we'll go check a few more spots as well. I had the same idea again. Yeah. Yeah. The other place has the advantage that it's got water. This is visually more interesting though. That's the other that's one of the other options there, Steve. Literally there. In the space of like in the space of one mile we've found three potential camping options. Um which is great, so I think we're fine for, for camp spots. We you see the views from this option here. That's Isla. I think this camp spot is winning. It has great views, winning. it's flat, there's a bit of shelter behind this structure thing here. Um, not gonna get midges. Yeah, it's, this is the winning spot. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head back towards where we got the ferry, and then we are going to explore some off-road, some gravel. Um, these spots we've been checking out, I kind of sussed out on Google Satellite View and Google Street View and, and that sort of thing. Um, so I kind of knew a bit about them on the gravel trail, I have no idea what's up there at all. So we're gonna go have a bit of fun, explore some gravel, a bit of off-road, and there might be more camping spots up there, I don't know, but we're gonna to aim to be back here, probably in about two to three hours, and set up camp here. Two hours. Cool, let's go.
that was a that was a tight climb. I don't ride much gravel, but this is pretty tough to ride on. It's tough going, isn't it? But look at that. Beautiful, beautiful Jura. Look at this. Incredible. I think that's as far as we're going to go on the gravel trail. We can kind of see it going off into the distance and it doesn't look like there's anything super interesting that close to us. We're going to have to go a bit further maybe to find anything interesting. Um, and we do want to get back and get get our tent set up and that sort of thing before it's uh, too late. So I think we'll call it there for the gravel um, trail now. And then I think we'll head back to one of the other potential camp spots. Maybe a terrible idea. Yeah, that's a terrible idea.
we have really lucked out with the weather, at least for today. Like glorious sunshine, it's warm. Yeah, this is class. Who knows what tomorrow will bring, but I'm just gonna enjoy this for now. Unbelievable. Okay, that is today's riding done. Uh, all the way from Ballymena to Bally Castle, across Isla, and then a little bit of Jura, including a little bit of gravel on Jura. But the gravel was pretty tough going, so, um, and we do have two more days of cycling to do, so I uh, decided not to push ourselves really on that. So we're back at our camp spot for the night, which I'll show you in a minute or two. Um, but yeah, gonna chill out for the evening. And just enjoy being in the middle of nowhere. Camp is all pitched and I've just boiled some water that I got from the river and I've made myself some spaghetti, not spaghetti bolognese, spaghetti carbonara. I say I've made, I've added boiling water to fuel hot and savoury spaghetti carbonara. It's actually pretty tasty. The sun is just about to set. So I'm going to make myself some hot chocolate, eat some snacks. I want to make sure I keep eating plenty on this trip so I don't run out of energy. Um, but one of the things that is a bit crazy to me is that although I'm only maybe 70 miles from home, um, I, I got here by bike. So I cycled from home to the north coast of Northern Ireland. I got a boat from the north coast of Northern Ireland to Isla in the Outer Hebrides, off the west coast of Scotland. Then I cycled across the Isla and got a boat across to the Isle of Jura. Then we cycled to our campsite. So it's just, yeah, bikepacking's class. You can get anywhere by bike, really. Um, so yeah, that kind of blows my mind a little bit. Even though it's only 70 miles as the crow flies from home. Yeah, pretty cool. Hats off to the guy who invented the bicycle. Just to give you a reality check and <laughs> to balance out all the amazingness of Isla and Jura and cycling and bike packing, this is the reality. Now that the sun has dipped below the horizon, the world famous Scottish midges have come out in force. Uh, we have a little midge repellent thing going over here somewhere. Um, I have sprayed myself with insect repellent. 
and yet the midges still come. So I have donned my midge mask to try and prevent me going home looking like I've had the chicken pox. Boiling some uh, water to make myself some nice chocolate horlicks. Meanwhile, over here, Stephen is lighting ah! fire, a little stove, um, to keep it nice and contained and safe, and hopefully ward off some of the midges. I'm sitting, uh, having my Horlicks by the fire, and then probably just going to climb into the tent and go to bed and try and get some sleep. So I'm going to end the video here for today. Um, thank you for watching, as always. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing. Um, I do appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next video, which will be tomorrow's leg of the trip.